So it was shit like that that happened quite a bit with my coworkers that really allowed me to see that they were involved in participating. None of those motherfuckers were innocent. The guy that was homosexual, he knew about the other uh, inappropriate things that was going on in the hotel, which is another thing that was really weird to me. It was like, there was people in, in the hotel doing shit that they shouldn't have been doing. Like, you know, uh, these young girls coming up there and prostituting and taking Johns up and taking Ubers out and shit. And they all talking about it. Yeah. And, you know, I know she's probably a working girl right there. Why would you allow that kind of shit to go on in a hotel and you know about it? This is why it was also confirmation to me that these pieces of shit were involved in what was happening to me because they didn't have any boundaries. They didn't have any any shame or guilt or even a conscience about those type of things. So the gay guy was always trying to buy me food and give me food without me even asking, you know, just purchasing something, having it brought through through Uber and want trying to give it to me. And it's like, once you've done that a couple of times and I say no, or I don't eat it, why would you continue to do it? And I've already talked pretty heavily about how these people are so desperate to get give you food and to give whatever they're putting in this food in your body. So the manager... Andrea, I knew she was heavily involved because just uh, just the way she behaved, especially toward the end, when I caught her having me monitored on the front desk computer. So it was one night I was working and the computer froze and I couldn't check a couple of people in and it was around seven o'clock and there was people coming in, quite a few, and I couldn't get people checked in. So I called her and I was like, hey, you know, there's something the, the computer has frozen up because it had it had done that before. And she was like, yeah, we'll just go back and do the same step. So I had to go to the main server, shut it off and turn it back on, which was a computer. So I go back and, you know, I try to do it, but the computer wasn't responding. The um, home screen was up and it wouldn't I mean, it wouldn't do anything. None of the keys would work. It wouldn't respond at all. I couldn't shut it off. I couldn't power it off. I couldn't do anything to it. So I called her back and I said, uh, yeah, I said, that's not working. I said, I'm trying to, you know, turn the computer off and back on and it won't respond to anything. Really? I said, yeah. I said, I don't, it's really weird. I said, I, can't, I tried to power it off and it won't even power off. So she's like, well, go back there and try again. So I go back. And when I go back to the computer this time, it's powering off. I didn't even do anything. And then it powers back on. When it comes back on, you can see the home screen leaves and the cursor's moving and somebody's operating the, the, uh, the computer remotely. So I'm like, what the hell? And then once they go to a couple pages and turns uh, different sites, they turn it off again. They uh, shut the computer off again. And when it goes off, it, this name pops up on it. And I'm telling her what's happening as it's happening. And she's like, what's the name that pops up when it signs off? And I told her, and she, oh, shit, under her breath. And so I said, who's that? Uh, I'm not really sure. How are you not sure when you reacted th- like that? So that right there let me know that she had somebody in that computer, or at least she was aware of somebody who was going to be in that computer monitoring what I did on the computer when I was there by myself. Because I had printed off a couple of uh, forms about lawsuits and civil rights and stuff like that, civil rights violations, forms and things like of that nature. I had printed some of those things off and I was looking at those things. And so 
they decided they wanted to have more access to like what I was doing when I was there by myself. Cause normally I wasn't, but when I was there by myself, you know, you had, you got to have eyes on you at all times. And I can't have access to any computer without them knowing what I'm doing on it and also being able to control it. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> wow. So obviously I made a couple of videos about it and I talked about how, you know, these people were going to be going down and they were going to be arrested and they were going to be uh, dealt with and justice will be had. Right after I made some of those videos, um, I started having a whole lot of people of the Mexican descent coming in, trying to create confrontations with me and making complaints. Now, I hadn't had any of the complaints. Uh, The only other complaint that I had was uh, somebody complained about me having my headphones around my neck. Some man emailed about me having, and and I knew when, when they told me about that, and they let that complaint stand that they were already trying to build some sort of a case to have a reason to try to let me go. Because the police, oh, they were they were livid that they didn't have access to me the way they wanted to have access to me. They were constantly following me in and out of the uh, gas stations and following me all over the, the uh, what I would leave to go shop or go do something, follow me everywhere. And when I would leave, they would also go up to the hotel. And right before I was let go, um, this police officer came in, came into the hotel, came up to the front desk because it was just me and was like, did you call 911? And I said, no. You didn't call 911? No. And I didn't have my name badge on. What's your name? I said, you don't even know my name. (laughs) I just told you I didn't call 911. Oh, okay. All right. So I knew, I was like, okay, here we go. You know, these motherfuckers are getting ready to try to get me fired. So I knew that the the Andrea, the supervisor, I knew she was involved with these people coming in and making these complaints. I mean, and I recorded it all. I recorded it all. All these interactions and all these people that were going to try to complain, I had it all recorded because I already knew. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I know what these pieces of low life, no kind of brain cells people do. So she had this woman call me one night and ask me a whole bunch of stuff about giving out information over the phone. And I told her, I can't give you that information over the phone. Like if you, if you made the reservations, then you should already know the stuff, but I can't tell you who's in the room and what room they're in. I can't tell you those things. I don't know who you are. So she calls and makes this whole big thing complaint about me refusing to give her information. So the next day, this is how stupid these people are. They have no couth, none. So she calls me. She's there with me for about an hour, never brought it up. And then when she gets ready to leave, she calls me after she left. And I was like, did you, what happened between you and this girl, this lady, Teresa? And I said, who? This, what happened between you and this lady, Teresa? And I said, what lady, Teresa, are you talking about? Oh, she said she called and she was trying to get some information about um, rooms or whatever. And you, uh, you didn't, you didn't tell her what it was. And I said, I don't remember, you know, not telling someone anything about I said that I, I don't remember that specifically. I said, but anytime someone calls in and asks me specific questions about rooms and stuff like that, I said, I don't give that information out because we're not supposed to. And so she was like, so you don't remember having a conversation with uh, someone named Teresa? And uh, she said you were being really rude and you hung up on her. And I said, no, I don't hang up on anybody. I said, if anything, I just told her that I couldn't give her out, give out that information like I do anyone that calls in for that type of information. I said, but I don't hang up on people. So that wasn't me. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'll ask Jennifer then. That was it. But they had like a whole bunch of people. And like, again, they were all Mexican and I knew they were all affiliated with her. Um, Coming in and, you know, arguing about stupid shit and trying to, I wouldn't argue back. I just said and recorded. So then she comes in and um, 
tells me that they're going to let me go. And, you know, they got all these complaints and there was a complaint for the, and every complaint that they said they had, I had that incident recorded because I knew. And I said, um, yeah, I said, I have all those incidents recorded and that didn't happen. And I can prove that to you. Would you like to see? No, we don't, we don't want to see it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I should never have to have someone come to me and tell me. And I said, one, I don't know why you're so angry. I said, but two, um, how can you disregard what I'm telling you? If I'm telling you that I have proof that these people are lying and you don't want to see it, how are you still going to try to terminate me for that? Because I should never have to have, oh, you should never have to have people come in and lie to you about me and say something that isn't true and you shouldn't have to hear that. I agree 100%. I said, but I'm just telling you right now that every one of those complaints you just brought up, I have proof that I did not do that. I have video proof that I did not do that. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just, it's too many complaints. There's been a lot of them. And I said, what were the other ones then? What were the other complaints? Well, the whole thing with the call. And I said, again, I told you that that wasn't me. What were the other complaints? She, they, well, these are complaints that they never brought to my attention. So you're going to try to let me go over some complaints that you that you never brought to my attention. And on top of that, complaints that people lied about and I have proof they lied about it. It really doesn't matter. I mean, uh, Arizona's an at-state will and we didn't put, and then she's going to try to throw me in real slick and sly. We didn't put you in harm's way. We didn't put you in a situation where you could have been harmed or hurt. Why the fuck are you saying that? Hmm? Why the fuck are you saying that? Because this bitch knew she had been setting up dates to have me raped and violated while I was staying there. These motherfuckers, I'm sure, have videos of what happened to me. They have uh, recordings of what happened to me while I was staying there in these in these rooms when I was being raped. They set up and watched that shit and enjoyed it. And there was a whole bunch of fucking Mexican men that came in that were in construction and um, that were in uh, these CDLs that participated in heart and uh, assaulting me. And I had all kinds of problems and issues with them while they were there. Nobody did anything. So I was fired from that job because, again, these people were involved in participating in sex trafficking, sex trafficking me, monitoring, surveilling me. And when they realize, oh, she going to go to the authorities or she going to report us, we got to get her out of here. This is what typically happens. If it's not a setup like that, because that was kind of more specific because uh, I was actually staying on the property. It's a situation where they don't want me working there because. I'm making too much money or I have too much access to, you know, being away from their, their visible eye. And I've got plenty of other stories about uh, jobs that I've lost that's associated with that, that I'll talk about next. <laughs>